Hello, it's Maria Toplova, and for this video, I'm going to be talking about Fyodor Tolstoy and the method of watercolor underpainting. He created medallions and painted a lot of room interiors, but today we're going to be focusing on his watercolors and the way he painted dainty objects. He used a method called underpainting, when you use light blues and grays to create shadows before you add any color to the actual piece. This method is useful because instead of directly mixing cool and warm colors, which make a muddy gray or brown, you can instead use layers of watercolor to make the shadow. It also gives the piece a slightly more flat and illustrational feeling as you can see in Tolstoy's work. An underpainting allows you to make the piece rich with color without making anything muddy. Here's a few examples of underpaintings before there's any color on them. You can also add warmth to underpaintings, but today we're just going to be using blues and grays for cool shadows. So for this project, you're going to be doing a small dainty object, so I chose to do a little succulent in a pot. You're going to be doing a blue underpainting in all the cool shadows. So it doesn't necessarily mean every single shadow, but the shadows that are furthest away from the light source. So that pretty much means most of the shadows, but the blue will be more intense on the spots farthest away from the light. For this kind of technique, the goal is to have a lot of control over the watercolor and how it blends. So it doesn't need to have the same fresh and flowing feel that you would normally use, but you can make more strokes and try to control the color more. You can see me blending the different values of blue with my brush rather than just letting it flow with the water. Um, you, I'm starting with a light wash and then going darker while the paint is still all wet so that it blends. You can see in Tolstoy's paintings that they all had a solid color background uh, wash. You can totally do that, but for this one I'm just keeping the background white. As usual, always keep in mind the lightest point and the darkest point when doing watercolor and only add the dark blue to really dark shadows because if you do it to somewhere with a medium value, then the blue will stick out too much. At first, when I was practicing this technique, I added blue pretty much everywhere except for the very lightest point and that didn't work out because it ended up being very gray and too flat so you want to keep the areas that have a lot of vibrant color um, either with no blue or just a little bit and remember you can always lift or erase the color with a clean wet brush this technique is pretty advanced and pretty unconventional um, when you're thinking about traditional watercolor so this shows the different possibilities of this medium. Since it's all about transparency, then you can utilize having, you know, different sets of paintings in one piece. And for any still life, always remember to paint the drop shadow. Now I'm ready to add the color. I'm starting light and then going darker. And you can't do a solid wash over everything and have it be perfect. You still have to add a darker color to the shadows, but the underpainting will create a blue tint to it. And since this technique is all about planning your watercolor and where you're going to put it rather than letting it flow freely, I'm using a lot of brush strokes to paint this one smooth shadow instead of doing wet on wet with a huge brush. Even though I'm adding a warm gray everywhere, you can still see the cool tones coming out. For the shadows on the leaves, I'm still adding a really dark green because I want a lot of contrast in my piece and the under underpainting won't provide all of that contrast. I'm doing a very light wash of green over all the areas that are white from the underpainting because this kind of cactus doesn't have any white in it since it's not shiny or anything so it's safe to put one wash of green all over and then I'm going back with a darker more rich green for all the shadows and I'm blending them together by adding water 
In order to define the shape of the leaves, you want to use a dark green and very carefully place the shadows and outline the leaves. Now I'm just adding more of these dark shadows all around the plant. Keeping in mind the lightest and the darkest points, I'm adding accents to the darkest. Now I'm just cleaning up the edges of the shadow with a clean wet brush. And finished! Now it's your turn.